Hey guys and welcome back to Motoring Box. On today's episode I'm going to show you hopefully how to fix a dodgy headliner. Stick around. So here we have the headlining out of my Ford AU Fairmont gear and as you can see it's looking really atrocious. The foam backing has completely disintegrated causing the material to sag away in almost every part of the headlining. A saggy headliner like this one can really bring down the appearance of your car's interior and I've always really been delaying this job because in my own mind it seems like it would be a really difficult thing to fix but having done a bit of research online I reckon we can knock this over in a couple of hours. As you can see I've already removed my headliner from the car but if you need some tips on how to remove yours this is how I did it. To remove your car's headliner you firstly need to remove everything which is holding it up there. This includes the grab handles, map lights, the centre light, pillar cover plastics and also the front sun visors. Once you've got everything removed it's just a simple task of getting the headliner out from behind the pillar plastics and then getting it out of the car. On a Falcon or a Commodore this is actually fairly easy to get it out of the passenger side door opening. So now that you've hopefully got your headlining out of the car, we now have to strip off any fittings which are still fixed to it. So in my case I've got some map light sockets here and I've also got this overhead console bin with the sunglasses holder and the map lights. So before I do that I'm going to take a couple of photos, especially for these map lights, to make sure that I refit them the correct way around when the job is all done. After that I can remove the material and then start the fun job of scraping off the foam. So firstly I'm going to remove all of the map lights from the headliner. This is actually a fairly easy process. There is a backing plate which you have to unclip and then the two halves will simply come apart. And then we're going to repeat the process for the remaining map lights. The overhead console is also extremely easy to remove, being held in with just four screws. Now that we've got all of the fixtures removed from the headliner we can now get to work on pulling off the fabric and getting rid of the foam. As you can see the fabric is barely held on at all so it's really easy to start pulling it away. But I of course did encounter a couple of staples and also some double sided tape. Try and remove these if possible and then get the fabric and throw it in the bin. As you can see here the foam has almost completely degraded and simply rubbing your finger across it is enough to almost remove it entirely. So what I've decided to do here is get one of my trim removal tools and use it to scrape the foam off the backing board. You can use pretty much any scraping tool you like here so long as it gets the job done. This is a fairly time intensive task so I'm going to skip ahead here but of course we need to go over the entire headliner and scrape off as much foam as possible. We're definitely going to need to give this a second or third going over so don't stress if you can't get all of the foam off in the first go. It was at this point that I decided to get the headliner backing board and sit it on top of an open wheelie bin. So I can simply scrape the foam through the hole into the bin. This is quite a messy job but I really think this is probably the neatest way you can go about it. Now that we've scraped off the majority of the foam I'm going to get a sanding block and try and sand off the remaining foam remnants. I imagine regular sheets of sandpaper would work just as good but don't get something which is too coarse it needs to be a fairly fine grit because the foam is fairly soft. Making sure that you get into all the nooks and crevices to remove as much foam as possible because if you miss a spot it's going to affect how well your new headliner can stick to the existing backing board. A little bit of extra time spent here is well worth it so take your time. Alright guys we've got our headliner backing looking pretty good now. If you've done a proper job you shouldn't have any traces of orange foam left and you should have successfully transferred them to pretty much everywhere on your body which is the unfortunate thing. It's not a fun job and it took me probably about 45 minutes to get it looking like this. When it comes to replacing the material on your headlining I always recommend that you stick with the existing colour. In my case the AU Fairmont's headlining was light grey and I was able to find this kit on eBay which is specially designed for headliner replacement. It's got a grey fabric on the outside and then a foam backing underneath. And if we take a look at a piece of the existing headliner which I've been able to save it's almost an exact match. Now some people like to put black headliner fabric in instead because they think it looks really cool but I really think headliners look great when they're matched perfectly to the colour of the pillar plastics. 
So in my case, the AU Fairmonts are gray. So I really prefer them to be matching rather than have gray pillars and then a black headlining. So I'm gonna pull this out of the packaging now. I think it's really important that you double check the measurements of the headliner backing size because I went on eBay initially and found a one and a half by one and a half meter fabric sheet, which they said would fit an AU. But when I ran my tape over this thing, it was closer to 1.6 long. The width was fine, but the length, I don't think was gonna cut it. So I actually found another listing, which was for a one and a half by two meter piece of fabric. So it should be able to do the job. I've decided to go with this Sally's Quick Grip water-based adhesive because according to their website, it is good for up to 160 degrees. If we compare that to this Quick Grip spray version, which I was going to use initially, this one is only good for up to 70 degrees, which is not gonna be anywhere near good enough for the Australian summer. Cars here in Queensland regularly hit 70 degrees on a hot summer's day. And I think if you use this, you're gonna come back to your car and you're gonna see patches of your headlining starting to sag and that's not what we want. I think 160 degrees will do it, so that's the product I'm going to go for. As you can see, it comes here in a tub, so I've bought a little brush, that's a 38 mil brush, which I'm going to use to brush it on. And I've also bought a little ripper 60 mil baby foam roller, which ideally I think should help me sort of roll it on and make sure I get it applied without any bubbles or lumps. So I'm going to pull the headliner fabric out of the bag and put it onto the backing board the correct way up. I'm going to do this to try and keep the surface of the fabric as clean as possible. As you can see, this two meter by one and a half meter piece of fabric is more than big enough for what we need. So I'm going to drape it over the headliner backing board and try and center it as closely as I can. From there, I'm going to grab my brush and start applying the glue. I think with the foam backing on this headliner, I want to get a fairly thick covering of glue. And I've also decided to do it in two halves so that I don't have to try and stick down the entire headliner in one go. This particular product says you need to wait approximately 20 minutes for the glue to go from white to clear. But as you can see, after I waited for the 20 minutes which they recommended, the glue was still white. So it was at this point that I decided to try and stick down the fabric anyway. The strength of the adhesion was next to nothing, so I was starting to become a little bit worried at this point. But still, I decided to soldier on and I got my roller and started making sure the material was stuck down correctly, going over the same areas multiple times to try and get the two surfaces to stick together. By this point, there was no going back, so I decided to flip the back half of the material over and start applying the glue on the second half. By this point, I was also running out of daylight, so in a last ditch attempt of desperation, I got some clothes pegs and put them all the way around the outside of the header board to hold the fabric down. And I also got a collection of objects to sit on the backing board itself to try and weight the material down, because we're definitely going to need to leave this overnight in order for it to dry. So it's now the next morning guys, and things are looking a little bit better. The glue is finally set, and most of the headlining seems to be stuck down extremely strongly. If I was going to do this again with the benefit of hindsight, I probably wouldn't use this quick grip water-based contact adhesive because even though the instructions say that it grabs immediately upon contact, my experience with it anyway yesterday, it didn't do that at all. I was really struggling to get the material to stick to the backing board and in the end I had to weight the whole thing down with pretty much anything I can find and then get a whole lot of clothes pegs which you would have seen in the video and put it all around the edges to hold the surfaces together. But for the most part it looks as though I've been successful. The majority of the fabric is stuck down really tough but there are a few patches along the back here where I can tell in the corners that the material hasn't actually stuck down to the backing board properly. But look, I guess all we can do is reinstall all of the map lights and the center console bin, get it back into the car and see how it goes. So now we're going to install all of the fixtures which were on the headliner, starting with the console bin. This is super easy to install. You simply drop it into place and then screw it in with the four screws from the underside. The map lights are also super easy to put back together. Simply put the plastic facing back in place and then clip on the metal backing plate. And then I'm going to reinstall it into the car through the passenger side door opening. So a week has passed and it's now a beautiful Saturday morning. What a perfect day to install a headliner. 
Today, I've got an excellent feeling we're going to succeed. I just know it. With the headliner sitting in position, it's time to get all of the roof wiring in the correct places. Take your time here to make sure you get the layout correctly because there's no going back once you get the headliner installed. From the factory, Ford actually used some tape to hold the wires in place and I think this is a really good way to do it. Because between now and actually raising the headliner into position, it's possible that some of these wires might move. So taping them down in place is actually a really good idea. So to help hold the headliner up, I've raised the front seats again, and I'm going to start by clipping the headliner in behind the C-pillar plastics. This will help hold up the rear section of the headliner while I'm getting everything installed. Before moving on and getting the front half clipped in behind the A-pillar plastic covers. It's going so well guys, I'm excited. A new day and a new headliner. It doesn't get any better than this. Once the headliner is roughly in position, you can start reinstalling some of the main fixtures, starting with the front sun visors. These are held in place with two screws at one end and a mounting bracket which needs to be installed at the other end with a single screw. The map lights too can also be reinstalled. Plug them into the connector and make sure they work before clipping them back into position. The rear section of the headliner actually has two push-in trim fasteners, so make sure you've got the holes cut out for these and then push them into place. Everything's easy up until this point and it's all going exactly as planned. We're putting in the remaining map lights and then starting to reinstall the grab handles as well. These are super simple to install and have a single screw on each end. The B-pillar plastic is the next one to be reinstalled. It simply clips back into place and also helps to hold the headliner in place. Once all of your fixtures have been reinstalled, you can start rolling back the door rubbers. And as a finishing touch, the center light is the last object to be reinstalled. Four screws, a bulb, and the lens. So did I pass or did I fail? Check it out and see what you think. And that's it guys, we've finally reached the end of this headliner saga. But I have to say, I'm feeling slightly conflicted with the end result. On the one hand, when you consider that this car is just a daily driver that cost me next to nothing to buy, the headliner looks fantastic and really, to be honest, it's perfectly matched to the overall condition of the rest of the car. But on the other hand, if you've got a car which is worth a lot more than this one and you care a lot more about it, Perhaps you would want to pay a professional to do a professional job. At the end of the day, I am pretty happy with what I've been able to achieve here considering I am a complete novice and I've never attempted a headliner repair before. But would I do it again? Probably not. This was one of the least fun jobs I've ever had to do in the garage and it took a hell of a lot of time for the glue that I used to dry. It was a complete nightmare and in the end it took me more than a week to get the job done. So if you're going to give this a go yourself, definitely do some more research when it comes to the glue because the product I used, I don't know whether it was the weather, the humidity and the rain on the day that slowed down the drying time, but it was just ridiculous. I came back the following day and it was still wet. So I had to wait a week for this glue to dry and there are a few patches where the headliner fabric hasn't properly bonded with the headliner backing. So yes, definitely do your research when it comes to the glue. So what do you reckon guys of my cheap as chips headliner repair? Let me know in the comments below and of course if you've got any tips on how this could be done better, put them down there as well because a lot of people are going to be looking at this video I suspect and considering giving it a go themselves. So the more information that's out there, the better. See you next time.